Okay, them. so uh, I've got the uh, the level set up behind me here. Sorry, once again, I've given you all bad camera angle this morning. And as we talked about, the boat has some... The top, so Tom is sitting right in the middle of the front deck. And you see, if I get over here, the boat's got a lot of... Well, it's got a lot of list to it. I don't know what that is. It's going to be the same to both sides. But a lot of that is a function of it's a light, light boat, right? Tom, stand up for me and walk all the way to the side on each side up there. I'm going to stand in the middle back here. Oh, don't break a rod. Yeah. All right, and then, so you see it's got some list to it. That's, that's not as bad as I thought it was, though. That both of us, we could get it off a stump. Oh, yeah. The one other thing that I've noted in the boat that I felt, it felt tippy to me, and I realized kind of what it was afterwards, sorry guys, was when normally when you go back to front or front to back, you go down the middle. Well, Tom's got that seat there, so you got to go on the box. And when you go on the box, of course, you're getting more lean to the boat. That's the only thing that feels weird to me fishing out of the boat. But I guess I'm going to have to deal with that if I want three seats across. That seat will fold down, obviously. But as you know, you don't really don't want to step on the backs of those seats. I guess the other option would be, and whoever's in the middle seat's kind of screwed, not giving them a back, just giving them a pad to sit on. Which isn't bad, actually. You guys probably saw when we fished the other day with, uh, with Brian and Jim. Jim sat on that middle spot and he didn't have a backing to it. You know, normally when you're three guys in a boat, you're not going to make 20 mile runs, so it's not so bad. But that's the only thing that's really felt weird to me about this boat. And it took me a little bit to figure out why I felt that way. But I understand now I had to go on the outside to get to the front. I like the little channels they left right there to give you space. Because you don't think about that when you're running a big boat. you got to have space to lay your rods down. And that's a nice one. It's out of the way. The gunnel's high enough that limbs aren't going to scrape your boat, uh, scrape your rods out of the boat. You know, we talked about that some in the glass boat search. There's a happy. I really like the look of no gunnel where it's just carpet across. But the downside to it is it's a really good way to scrape a rod out of the boat or bounce a rod out of the boat versus this. I mean, you could take off across the lake and forget to strap your rods down, and they're not going anywhere. They can't jump that jump that gun okay so i didn't have my uh i didn't have my unit on down there when we did the tip test i'm gonna redo that again so that's tom standing in the middle of the front of the boat me standing all the way on the starboard side and that's me all the way on the port side so it's reporting down there and i'm gonna let tom step to either side up there so that's tom basically as far as you'd go fishing on that side and then going over the port side there's a lot more stability on the front of the boat than there is the back of the boat. And that's because there's so much more width back here. But it's it's not terribly tippy to fish out of, but you can dang sure rock it if you wanted to. I can't remember if we did a hole shot on it. these little boats just bounce out of the hole absolutely bounce out of the hole so i leave myself a lot of reminders for things so i don't forget because of uh my senior moments uh i actually will sometimes call myself and leave a voicemail and say ken of the future this is ken of the past but so in this case this is ken of the past talking to ken of the future but sharing this thought with you guys uh, the one big takeaway i got from doing this review today with tom on the uh on the triton is i gotta have a recessed recessed foot pedal for my trolling motor you know i fished for years with uh with non-recessed foot pedals just up on the deck like that and that is hard to do now uh i guess just from getting i, I guess it was probably hard to do back then too i was just a lot younger and i didn't know any different but I, whatever I buy that's a 10 boat will have to have a way to recess that foot pedal I, I, I can't do that it's just it's tiring it's you know it's harder on me so just thought I'd share that you got to be careful I this thing ain't got a hot foot in it I'm used to having a hot foot
good? Centered itself on the trader nice, and you see he can just reel it up because it's so light. Something you can't do in a bigger boat. It's kind of nice. You don't have to jam it on the trailer. You just get it up there snug, and he reeled it up another six inches. Super easy. One other thing we talked about a lot was where he's mounted this graph here. Uh, I would either get it up here or mount it. I, if, if you remember some of my old Rangers, I put that same ball mount off to the side. I don't love these because of, you see what's happening there. They'll, they'll move around on you. Uh, but I, I could not have this eat in the middle of my boat like this. I would have to get it up here and dual mount it or get it over on the side over there. Put that same ball mount on the other side, which the downside to that is, as I experienced in my Ranger, when I had one you know, many years ago on that side is you're gonna catch branches, which don't hurt your units, but it'll certainly pull on your cables. So just kind of a rigging idea. This is really, it, from going back and forth, it's in the way. And if you're unstable, I grabbed it earlier and bent it down coming from the back deck to the front deck because of that mount it's on. So I think there's probably, and he talked about there's probably a better way to do this. I think he's gonna try to design something himself to do it. So that was kind of a, just a thought being in the Overall, I, I really like the boat. It's a smaller boat probably than what I want. I think I'm gonna want something 18 foot plus, but for the size of boat it is, the performance is good. I really like the camo pattern on the boat. Little single axle trailer, it's just a manageable boat. Got a nice ride, no porpoising issues. I don't think we captured it, but I, we were running it 19, 20 miles an hour. Sorry guys, I had somebody pull up on me there, a buddy, and start chatting and didn't realize I was filming. But what I was saying was, you know, we ran this boat uh, 17 to 20 miles an hour, no porpoising issues, uh, which, was, which is going to be handy in a boat this size uh, and something I was pleased with. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, and again, this is the uh, Triton X17C. Uh, just for you guys who might be looking at propping a boat, so he's running an 18 pitch. Vengeance. Vengeance, Mercury Marine Vengeance. And I'm gonna say that's probably as good a performance as you're gonna get out of a, that's a 75, right? Yes, sir. Out of that 75 horse. You know, one of the things we've talked about, it's really kind of one of the only downsides on a metal boat is you can't shoot your electronics through the hull. So you gotta put them on the back of the hull, which then you have challenges of uh, getting readings when you're running down the lake because you get so much turbulence coming off the hull because of where those things are set up. That's just part and parcel of a metal boat. Nobody yet's figured out how to shoot a transducer through a metal hull. I suspect the US Navy's figured it out, but I don't think they've shared it with anybody. Yeah, let's do. I see it. Is it you put that step on there, didn't you? I did, bolted yeah. on. Yeah, just a bolt on step. You know, Jones sells those similar, a little, a little fancier with a pole on them. Uh, there at Jones Trolling Motor in Texarkana. Single axle. It's all bed liner. Uh-huh. And if you look, the framing material is not folded metal like that. Uh-huh. It's forged metal. Well, that's boxed. But yeah. Most of them on the lighter weight boats use a folded metal that's not nearly as strong. Huh. I added a watt-hour meter onto the troll. And we're at 69% of capacity right now. Okay. There's an hour meter over there. Keep up with the wall changes and stuff like that. So that's your motor hour keeper? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you don't have a smart gauge on this one. Did you add a fuel filter down there too? Yep. Spin uh, with a little homemade catch basin in case I get a drip. Yep. It'll catch it in clear plastic. That's a great idea if you got a fuel, because fuel filter rattle loose and you're leaking, you don't want it in your hull. That's a great idea. Show y'all what he did there. He just made his own little catcher and put uh, drilled holes in it, zip tied it to it. If you got fluid in there, you better get on it because you got a problem. That's, that's when you start coming home. Yep. Um, Bilges are pretty easy to get to down there. Is that a tool kit you got laying there? That, yeah, that yeah. Kubota box is full of tools. Yep. Just enough to get the motor running again. Mm -hmm. um, what else have I added? All of that. You put the onboard charger yourself or did it come from the factory? No, it's factory. Okay. 
added midships cleated. Oh, you added those? Yeah. Okay, so that's a big deal to me, having midship cleats. Especially okay. if you ever go through locks and stuff. Yeah, you brought it up yeah. in one of your videos and I adopted it. Yeah. It's a good idea. Well, and you used it right there at the ramp a minute ago by yourself. Because yes. you fish by yourself most of the time. Most of the time. And, and you made a comment today about your life jacket. Oh, I'll show it to you. The uh, inflatable will float your face up. But that just gets your head out of the water. It doesn't save your life until somebody finds you. There we go. A whistle and somewhere in there a strobe. So when that would deploy, that would pop out. And you said right. that strobe is visible at a mile in sunshine. That's what it says on the label. Yeah, that's cool. That's a great idea. Uh, by the way, Brian O'Connor, you told me you bought me one of those and you still hadn't delivered it to me. So come on, man, fix your brother up. That's a good idea. I know of a guy who went in the water at Okeechobee years ago and uh, he and his buddy both went in the water and one survived and one didn't. And he said that they had boats run within a hundred yards of them. But it was choppy and they couldn't see him. It was cold January. So he added his own LED lights versus a stand up. Just probably pretty easy little wiring. Where's your access? Through that hole right there? That's it. So that's pretty tight quarters up there. It is. But you can actually get your arm all the way to here. Yeah. And is that your trim switch right there? Yeah. Okay. So you can get to that. I love rocker switch trim switch. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's completely functional. Completely functional. Oh, I love it. You got your uh, your don't steal my boat trailer thing or don't steal my boat strapped to your trailer so whenever you go, you know you've got it with you. That's a great idea. Yeah. See what I'm talking about there? That's pretty cool. Well, you'll notice at the ramp. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we have had, that I know of, two trailers stolen. Both of the ones I know of were out of the Monterey ramp, but if they'll steal them a mile that way, they'll steal them here too. So probably not a bad idea to put a 50 cent lock on there just to keep them. And it's not that they can't steal it. It's just that that one don't have one. Yeah, you don't steal one, over there. Steal that one. Yeah. Don't steal this one, steal that one. Yeah. Yep. That's All right. original tires. Uh, I've changed the... Well, now, wait a minute. How far do you drive to this boat ramp? Four miles. <laughs> so it's a 2014 with 1,000 miles on it, probably. It's got a LED light instead of incandescent for the, on the back. For uh -huh. yep. All the others were LED, but not those. The little tie-down straps. I saw it's got a place for it on the other side, but you don't have one over there. Oh, it's because it'd go over your transducer, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yep, so you took that one off so he wouldn't pop his transducer off. Okay, sorry about We kind of ended that video abruptly. We had another diesel roll by and we couldn't hear on the audio anything that we were talking about. Um, so that's an eight, uh, eight or nine year old boat. I guess a nine year old boat since a lot of the 2023s are coming out now. That boat uh, is priced way less than what I would look at in a new boat. Just kind of looking around on boat trailers, there's not a lot of metal boats for sale, but that boat looks like it'd be priced eleven to fifteen thousand dollars right now. And for that price point, if you're a small water fisherman and you're not going to be out in the big stuff, that's a cool little boat. A couple things I don't like about the boat, the way specifically he has his boat set up, I'd have to move that graph out of the middle. I'd have to have a recessed trolling motor pedal. And I don't think you can do that in that boat. I'll also say. I can't own a boat without spot lock. Uh, we, were, we, we did a little bit of fishing there in that boat. And I mean, if you squat down to do anything, especially in a metal boat, because it blows around worse than a glass boat. You're you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 yards off your spot, just like that. Uh, so that would be two setups. And then I really don't like, with that third seat folded up, how you have to go down the side of that boat. That, that's, it's unsteady and for me a little bit dangerous, and I certainly wouldn't want the boys doing that. So if you're gonna get that boat, I think you got to figure out a way that people can go down the middle and if you're going to run two graphs at the dash get those graphs over centered on top of that uh, dash where you can get down the middle it's going to free up a lot more space in the middle of the boat uh, it's it's not fancy right and there's no slam latches there's no compressions on them uh, <clears throat> it is a 10 boat it is a, an inexpensive in today's boat world metal boat but I'll tell you, it must be a tank because fishing with Tom, 
he just picked a line and went on the north end of Rayburn. And I guarantee you that's the way he fishes. And I guarantee you doing that, he bumps some stuff. And uh, he just drives it. He just goes where he wants to go. So that boat's got to be a heck of a tank for him to be able to do that. Uh, I'm going to talk some more about the build on these metal boats as we do some more boats in the future, how they're braced. But I'll save that for a later conversation and for when we actually grade these boats out. But as I said in this video, this boat's a little bit small for what I'd want. But other than the recessed trolling motor pedal, I wouldn't have a problem having this as a second boat. This would be a great boat. If you're going to go up Marion's Ferry and put in or fish, you know, Lake Tyler or smaller lakes around the country or rivers around the country, this would be an ideal boat. The boat has tremendous lift. It really lifts. And I started thinking about it. He's got an anchor in his front compartment. So he got a lot of weight in front of that boat. Uh, still got a lot of lift uh, and, you know, impressive ride. It's, it's noisy, but it's a metal boat. The metal boats are just noisier boats. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I won't be fishing this week. I don't know if we'll have any videos up next week, guys. As soon as I'm better, I've got more boat reviews to do, and I've got a prop video I want to do for you guys, too. But i got to get better and get back to work first. So bear with me. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for referring your friends to my channel. i got some golf stuff that I'll get up. <coughs> Excuse me. But i got to get rid of that first. So thanks, guys. We'll see you all soon.